Hey guys, welcome back to your database design video series. In the last three videos, we talked about one-to-one -one relationships, one-to-many relationships, and one-to-many-to-many uh, -to -many relationships. This video, I wanted to talk about how we design these relationships. I decided I was going to break them up into three videos. So first we'll be talking about designing one-to-one -one relationships, and then one-to-many, and then many-to-many. -many. So this video will be about designing one-to-one -one relationships in a database. Alright, let's begin. So the first thing we need to realize is that when we have a one-to-one -one relationship, the, the attribute side, so we have an entity, so let's say, let's just say we have a connection between a person and uh, their, their username, alright? So we have this, we have this guy. Here, let me get rid of these boxes. I don't need those. We have this guy. And he has a username on a website. We'll just say it's Caleb Kirk, because that's usually my username for things. And we'll just name this guy Caleb. Right? Well, that username, the only person who's going to have that username is him. And he is only going to have one username. That account is only going to have one username. That's a one-to-one -one relationship. So we need to realize that this is exclusive to this person. It's all his. No one else owns it. No one else is connected to it. It's only his. So that means we can often store one-to-one -one relationships as attributes rather than entities. So rather than his username being an entity, it's an attribute. If you don't really know what that means, don't worry, I'll be explaining in just a second. But just think of it as it's exclusively his, so that is part, it describes him. What is this guy's username? It's Caleb Curry. It's an attribute of that person. When we're talking about one-to-many relationships, though, or many-to-many, -many, we think of like a class. The, the students of the class are not exclusive to that class. They can take other classes. Therefore, it wouldn't really make sense to store them as attributes because it's not really, it, it just doesn't make much sense. And I know it'll, it'll be clear. So just, just wait a second. So we can actually have a table. The relationship between the account and the username of the account can be stored just as a column within the table. So we have an ID, and then we have an, a name, for example, and then a username. This username is exclusive to this ID of this person. So like 6 Caleb Caleb Curry. That is how we would design a one-to-one -one relationship. We would put it within the same table. And if we have a new row within our uh, table, we now have a new person. This person can't have another username like Caleb Curry. They have to have a different one. So we can make it uh, John123. This name is exclusive to that person. So we just store it as a column within our table. Make sense? So here are our individual rows. This points to this ID. It's an individual entity. So the entity is the, the account. The username is an attribute to that account. There will be occasional times when we store a one-to-one -one relationship over multiple tables. And I will explain now when that would be the case. Let's just think of an example of a database for a credit card company. We have a relationship between the card holder and the card. So, by card holder, I just mean the person who, who uh, gets the card and can use it to buy things. The person who owns it, pretty much. And then we have the card. All right. Now let's just say this this um, company only allows you to have one credit card. 
So this card holder can only have one card, and this card can only be owned by one card holder. That means we have a one-to-one -one relationship. One to one. How would we store this in a database? Well, if we just went with the attribute thing that we talked about earlier, here's what it would look like. Here's our table, and I'm just going to list the columns. So we have the, the card holder table. First thing is we'd have like a, an ID for the card holder. Uh, we would have probably card holder's first name, the card holder's last name, and then we would have the card. So we could say, well that's their card. We could let's say we could assign every card an ID or a a card number. So we could say card number. If they have a card, we can give it a value. If it if if they don't have a card, we can leave it null. Well, that can be considered an attribute of the card holder because all these point back to the card holder. Now, if we want to store more information about the card, such as the, the issue date, when the card was given to the person, so we could say card issue date, well now we can see that this is relying on the card, not the card holder. So if we want to store extra attributes about the attribute in the one-to-one -one relationship, we can move that to a new table, and we can make it a card table, give it an ID, and then we could say um, card number, and then issue date, now we can store as much information about this card. So if we want to store the max amount, um, the late fee, pretty much anything we want to store about this card can be stored in this table and we can replace this card number with a reference, so we have a card ID, and that points back to this ID. You see what I'm saying? This is a one-to-one -one relationship over multiple people. Just like this card has a connection to the card holder, there's a one-to-one -one connection over multiple tables. The reason we did this is so we could store more information about the card. Because if we stored it all in one table, we would have bad database design. And I'll show you why in just a second. Alright, so, here's our table, can you guys see that alright? We have the ID, and then the name of the person, and then we have the card number, and then the max amount, and so forth. Well, you can see that this table is really about two things, it's no longer about one thing we would have to say this is a user and card table, which is not proper because we're not following the rule of one, where a table should be about one entity, and a row should be about one entity. Because now we have the user side, and then we have the card side. It's like trying to store two tables in one. The only time it's okay, acceptable to have the card number in the users table is when we don't store more information about it. Because now all we have is a card number. The card number is about the user. It points to the user. But the max amount of the card has nothing to do with the user. Therefore, it's reliant, dependent upon the card. So a one-to-one -one relationship, in conclusion, one, a one-to-one -one relationship, the way it is stored is either an attribute 
within the table, or if you need to store more information about the entity, then we can have another table. And then just use foreign keys to connect them, which that's something we'll be talking about in an upcoming video. Almost always, though, uh, you will be seeing a one-to-one -one relationship used as an attribute. So when you think of you have a one-to-one -one relationship between something, you have a connection, let's say you, it's a dating website, um, the user is in a relationship with another user, that, that's a one-to-one -one relationship. We could just have that as a column within our user table. So we could have the user table, we could have the uh, user ID, the name, first name, last name, a phone number, whatever else. And then we could say relationship. That's a one-to-one -one relationship. We could just have that, have that be an ID of another person. And we don't have to worry about having another table for that. So yeah, that's a one-to-one -one relationship. In the next video, we'll be talking about designing one-to-many relationships. Thank you for watching, and be sure to subscribe.